All right, this is digital art for spring 2020. We're getting started with our first exercise. So just some basics. Once you're in ACES, you go to my courses for 2020 and you'll find digital art. You go to the home page icon. It will take us to our Canvas landing page, which has links to all the stuff we'll be accessing. And if I scroll down from here, I'll have links to the other sites and we'll even have the, the logins and the passwords that you need. So this, the things I want you to have open for exercise one is just a regular Google page. We're gonna do an image search. So we can just click on images and a Google image search, this is beautiful. And then next, we're going to go to photobucket.com. And this is locked for our class, but you'll see them in the videos. And you can log into this and know the password through the Canvas page and the links. So you can access it from any, any computer. And today we are working on our first exercise. So what's a little annoying about Photobucket is that we have to navigate through this side column and these drop down arrows. So digital art one, we click there, digital honors, you click here. And we're gonna go into exercises. Notice that the photo bucket is organized the way we're gonna organize our class files. So we just created a master folder with, for the class. Within that folder, we created an exercises folder, an assignments folder, just like you see there. And then we'll have subfolders just like you see here. So we're gonna to go to the subfolder for exercise one. It's called Cartoon Jumble. You'll actually notice that this folder is empty, but it has two subfolders within it. One is instructor demonstrations from past semesters. I'll right click and open that in a new tab. And one is past student examples from past semesters. I right click and open that in a new tab. And this gives us a sense of what we're doing. Sometimes getting an error message. <laughs> uh, just like on our computers in the, in the classroom, we are never going to delete anything from Photobucket. So I wanted to show you that. I just did something you are never allowed to do. Only I get to delete stuff because I don't want you accidentally deleting someone else's work. So instead, I'm going to create a new folder that's called trash. And you will drag anything you don't want showing into that trash folder. And I'll do that right now. So in Photobucket, we are in Digital Art 1, in Exercises, in Exercise 1 Cartoon Jumble. And if you scroll down all the way on the side column, you'll see that there's a trash folder. If you ever wanted to delete any of your work, if you uploaded something accidentally, you would just drag and drop it to that folder. So all of these examples, this is the one from last semester. They are simply taking existing pixels. I call them other people's pixels, OPP and arranging them into our own original composition. So all of these pixels were taken from, from high resolution line art from Bill Watterson's Calvin and Hobbes uh, ink drawings, an old cartoon strip. And then I have a, a black and white version and a color version. And then I have a, a different kind of colored version. So that's the, the maximum amount of things we'll do for exercise one to play around. And then here are some other past examples. So for this semester, I have to choose, this was He-Man, this was Garfield. I have to choose another type of line art. This was using patents on and on. And I think what I wanna use this semester, I'm gonna to go to Google Images and I'm gonna type in, so I'm gonna do asterisks and obelix. Now the problem is, there's just a ton of options, right? So this is a very famous European, you know, German comic about two Roman soldiers. And, and Vikings and the, the ancient world. The problem is I'm seeing all this stuff that isn't line art. So how can I make a smarter Google search? I'm gonna to go to tools. I'll zoom in a little so you can see this. And I'm going to say, okay, the only size I want is large which means it's going to be um, 
one of the dimensions at least will be over a thousand pixels, which doesn't mean it's huge, but it means it's large enough to be a decent screen resolution. And then I'm going to go to type and I might do line drawing. So now I only have line drawings of these characters that are at least a thousand pixels at, on one dimension. And sometimes the tags are wrong. So this has color in it, this has color in it, but this will help me find what I'm looking for a lot faster. Now for this project, I am going to be looking for ones that are at least 1400 pixels at the smallest. And so I'm just going to find a few, like maybe this one, I'm going to right click and say open link in new tab. And you can see the size. So this is 1400, but it's only by 826. So not that one. But if I hover over, this one is plenty big. At least thinks it is. That one's too small. This one's big enough. This one's big enough. That one is not. And we're going to want at least five of these. You know, no repeats. This one's 1339, but it's very wide. So even though it's not quite 1400, it's close enough. I don't want you to go any, any smaller than 1400. And try to pick them without any color. No smaller, no smaller than 1400 on any dimension. And so if you're not finding enough, you might need to broaden your search terms, right? So if you're looking for a particular anime or a particular character within a particular anime, you might need to broaden it up to other characters or other uh, types in that genre, that kind of thing. And for the best results, you're looking for line art that is kind of similar, right? So it has similar line weight. Uh, does it have to be just black? Uh, ideally, it's just black. But if we need to, we can clean it up so it is just black. So these are the few I've found, right? Notice there are more than five. And I've opened them all in a new tab. So why do that? Well, because sometimes, even though Google Images says it's a certain size, and it might be that size, but sometimes that size is already distorted. So you see how this looks kind of blurry compared to how sharp the others are? So to check it, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say open image in new tab. And then I can close the existing one and I can see, oh yeah, this one is really corrupted. You know, someone accidentally made that larger than it should have been and saved it. And so that's not one I can use. So I need to use five, but I want to... And I can use more than five, but I want to make sure everything I use is perfectly clean. So this is one that has been a live traced in Illustrator. We're going to learn how to do this this semester, but it hasn't been done particularly well. So you see how ch chunky and not so great? So that's not what I want to use. So if you right click, you say open image and new tab, you'll see it at full resolution. You can zoom in. Now this is about the quality I want. It's bigger than the screen. It's nice and clean. There's not a lot of artifacts. So once I have that, I can drag and drop it to the desktop. And then the other way I can save it is I could right click. So drag and dropping works. I can right click and also say save image as and then navigate it to the desktop. And then I can close that tab. So it's a few steps, but they're all worth it because we want to make sure we have good reference. So this one, Remember, this was just under 1400. So notice it's just the size of the screen. And I want you to ever use an image that's not at least 1400. Because it just will not print well, even on at small sizes. Okay, sometimes this will happen. You'll click on the image like that. I say uh, open image in new tab. And that's better than just clicking on the image, because if you click on the image, it will take you to the site it comes from. And then you get down a rabbit hole. So if it's better just to 
to view image in new tab. Now, what's the problem with this one? It's got this little watermark. For what we're doing today, where we're just taking away from other people's pixels, I'm just fine with that. Same with this one, open image and new tab. Looks good. I'm really hoping this one's good. Open image and new tab. And it's this is what's called bitmapped. So you'll see there's only black and white pixels. So it looks kind of chunky which breaks my heart, because this is a really cool one. But it's still big enough, I'm going to use it. <laughs> so you get to make those decisions. And then here, I already have five, but this is a good backup. Open image and new tab. Yep, this will work well. OK, good. Now we need to know what we're going to be doing with this, because all we've done so far is find good resources. So if I go back to my Google image search where I looked for my characters, now I want you to type in an artist's name. And his name is Art. So if you type in Arturo Herrera or Arturo Herrera art, you'll see the kind of stuff he does. Let's just look at him specifically. I first saw him um, at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston and saw a show he did of collages from coloring books. And what's interesting about it is that he loves a certain type of imagery. And that imagery that he loves is Disney imagery, which is something I know we're all familiar with. So it's spelled A-R-T-U-R-O, Arturo, and then last name H-E-R-R-E-R-A. And for just a little bit of background on him, he's from Venezuela. He works from Chicago. Um, and he works in all kinds of media. But there's always a collage element. He even does a lot of digital imaging with kind of collage elements. These are some of the earliest works I saw by him, which just took Disney coloring books and kind of cut and pasted collage them together into new pieces. And what's interesting is Disney is the most litigious, you know, company out there for suing people that use their images without permission. So he is doing this at great risk, right? This is actually the wallpaper on my phone. But he's able to do it in a way where you can tell it's sourced with the personality of Disney, but it has its own aesthetic, his own spin on it for sure. So this is one of his earliest pieces. You can clearly see Snow White, right? <coughs> but he has obscured it. Same thing here, he has the seven dwarves obscured with kind of these abstract expressionist blobs. He actually just does it with an X-Acto knife you know, and then makes the composition out of coloring books and then kind of layers them up like lace. And then for big pieces like this, he'll project it onto a wall and paint it. This is at the Arm & Hammer uh, Museum in LA. Or he'll sometimes cut it out of thick felt and then install it as a felt drawing. It's just kind of a really complicated cutout. But he's doing what I call a cartoon jumble. So why does he like Snow White and the Seven Dwarves? Done in 1939, something like that, 38. It's classic animation because the line quality is just so clean. It has such a personality to it, the Disney style of that age. And so he's using them just as a type of mark, almost like you would use a paintbrush tool in a, in a program to make his own compositions. So what we're going to do is we're going to layer up whatever line art we found, and we're going to try to capitalize on the personality of that line art, right? whether it's curvy, whether it goes thick to thin, whether it's really technical, whether it's really angular. And we're going to make our own unique composition just using those, those pixels. 
And we're going to start it in black and white, and then we'll add our own color. 